Dolly sods. I got a hammock. All I need is two trees. It's gonna keep it pretty chill. Whoa. Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and let me tell you what's currently going on. I'm right now sitting in my Jeep. I'm at the Bear Rocks Trailhead along the Allegheny Mountains in northeastern West Virginia. More specifically, I'm in a very unique area called the Dolly Sods Wilderness. It's mid-June, it's about 57, 60 degrees right now. It's probably only gonna go up to about 65 degrees, but I've got three days and two nights to do a little backpacking some hammock camping actually to be specific. I'm about to hop out of the car. Actually, I'll show you around right now as I jump out. And as you can see, woo, besides the wind, which is the one downside, it's pretty windy right now. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, beautiful trailhead though. We're actually on a plateau right now at this trailhead. It's the highest plateau east of the Mississippi. I'm around 3,800 feet right now, and it ranges from that up to around 4,200 feet, which for the East Coast is, you know, pretty up there. And like I said, pretty nice sweeping landscape. Got some cool rock features around here. And we're gonna do some hammock camping in the Jeep over here. As we tuck out of the wind, I got my backpack right there. Got my hammock in there. We'll get to the uh, details of that later. I'm running a base weight right now of around 13 pounds, which is actually about four pounds heavier than my last trip video. The reason being because of the terrain I'm on, I'm thinking it'll be about mm, 2,000 feet total of gross elevation gain for the next three days and around 22 miles or so for the loop I put together. So because that's not too aggressive, I brought my heavier, more comfortable hammock, the Amok Dramarth. But right now, I'm just gonna get the pack out. Put that down. And I believe that's about it. I got my water already in there. I got a liter and a half. I got some fuel for my alcohol stove check that out later and uh yeah pretty much lock up the jeep and get on the trail Woo. hunker down out of this wind Woo. that wind is whipping but here we are welcome to dolly sods in the Monongahela National Forest. And you also notice this lovely warning for live bombs. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Apparently, there was uh, testing here. After World War II, they did uh, testing of live munitions here, uh, various artillery and stuff like that. So there is potential for uh, live shells in the area. And so, they do recommend that you stick to the trail so as to not step on anything, you know, well, explosive. Well, thankfully, didn't take long to come off of the ridge there. Dip down a little bit in elevation and uh, get some protection from that wind. You can hear it in the treetops. But thankfully, it's not battering down on us quite as much anymore. In fact, it's quite peaceful. Got some ferns, some trees, and the trail ahead. First intersection, Dobin Grade Trail, would be that way if I went left in my case. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna head straight down here. I think day one is gonna be pretty chill for me other than try not to slip on the mud. It is a very wet area, by the way, which is why, eh, well, Dobin Grave, we'll get into that later. I wouldn't suggest that. But <laughs> it's a little, uh, it can be boggy around here. We'll put it that way. So far, I've been keeping my feet dry pretty much. I got my Adidas Gore-Tex uh, trail runners on. I'm doing pretty good staying out of the water. 
And I think even though this whole loop is 20, 22 miles, probably only going to do a couple miles today. Going to keep it pretty chill. So I think I'll load my miles on days two and three. And here's our first water crossing, actually. So it looks like trails right over there. So let's try to navigate this. Over here, it's narrower, but looks pretty deep. So I think, yeah, it's flowing pretty good. I've seen pictures and people have gone right across this without getting their ankles wet, but it looks like we're not gonna have that pleasure. So we'll just do what we have to do. are dry because I took them off. Wasn't particularly comfortable on the feet but uh, it is nice to have dry shoes. You can notice by the red water over there that uh, well there's a high iron content around here for sure. It's actually pretty hard on water filters but luckily um, right now at least I still have a good supply of water. In fact that's what I use to make my noodles just now so as is customary, do a little noodle break. Got this rock chair right here by the stream. And uh, just relax, eat some noodles, and uh, I guess eventually we'll start hiking again. Looks like we're about to break out on top of something here. The weather is still holding out beautifully, which is awesome. Let's see what we got here. All right. Wide open. No blazes so far that I've seen on this trail. But the nice thing is, all the trails have been fairly obvious, like this. There would really be no reason to stray off course, at least so far. And somewhere down in there, within like a mile or so, somewhere, we're gonna find some camp, I hope. Got a hammock, all I need is two trees. A little more hiking. We'll get some camp set up. Well, about a mile later, on that same grassy field, trails over there. I cut off to my left, followed it down, a little break in the trees. And according to my notes, there should be some camping back in here. And actually, well, instantly I see pretty decent fire pit. That looks awesome. <laughs> That's an electric skillet. I don't think I'll mess with that, but I guess you, uh, in desperation, could uh, put that over a fire. And a wide open spot, so you could get a bunch of tents, hammocks, whatever in here. In my case, I think I'm gonna set up my hammock. That's what I got. And uh, yeah, I'll just find some trees. And then a nice open area. Should be cool tonight. Um, rain on the third day, for sure. Uh, tomorrow's a little dicey, so tonight, potentially, maybe a clear sky. I could see some, uh, stars and whatnot. If I, uh, camp close in here, I can walk out there and see that. But, 
yeah not bad pretty cool spot so i think i'm gonna drop this pack finally let me get this unclipped Ugh. Whew. that feels good it's a light load but it still feels good to get it off that is for sure so we'll get the uh tarp up the hammock up get a little camp going All right, well, got the hammock set up, the Amok Dramar XL. Eh, maybe I could adjust it a little bit more, but feeling pretty good. The uh, tarp, as you can see, is a little lax. I have it pitched down in the back. I'll flip it down later, but from the weather reports that I did get, I'm thinking the rain will come late tonight. So for now, no big deal. I'm just gonna kind of lounge. Maybe put this in sit mode and uh, hang out for a little bit. Uh, it is going on 5 o'clock, so I'll probably make dinner at some point. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice little campsite. I had uh, multiple deer run around throughout here while I was here. I've been pretty quiet, just hanging out. It's been nice. It's wide open over there. Nice sun. Actually, in fact, according to my uh, thermometer on my watch, it's like 55 degrees in here in the shade. It's a little cool. And uh, out there, it's probably like an eh, 8 degree difference or something like that. It's like in the 60s. But uh, being in here in the pines, it's a bit cooler. But probably make for some good sleeping. I got a nice uh, top quilt. And this uh, pad is good to like winter temp so I'm, I'm good to go on that so i'll probably just relax for a little bit and uh i don't know maybe collect some wood for a fire i got some backpacking meals with me for both breakfast and dinner so i'll probably make a uh, like a mountain house meal later on tonight camp is set up and we're good to go who knows maybe i'll take a little nap <sighs> Good morning, everyone, and good morning, dear. Yes, hi, buddy, how you doing? Do you even care that I'm hanging from this tree and talking to you right now? Uh, it's like 6.30. I woke up to some sounds, and uh, there's a deer over there. Uh, digging at that stump. I've been waking up all night listening to these deer. It's been quite interesting. But how are you doing? Are you the same guy that's been <laughs> walking around all night? No? Maybe? I'm not sure. Probably not. There's a lot of deer around here. Like I saw last night. Or evening. While I was hanging in that field. <sighs> but, like I said, it's about 6.30. So I should probably get up. Got to put some miles in today because we only did a few yesterday. And because tomorrow is supposed to be the rainy day, I don't want to leave a lot of miles for that. So I'm thinking we might push up on 11-ish miles today and um, then leave six or seven for the last day, which may be a rain hike. But what else is new? <laughs> I've been having plenty of luck or bad luck, <laughs> however you want to view it with rain this is my third trip in a row with rain in the forecast but that's all right slept good in the uh amok here felt pretty good i showed that before on the other video um my hammock camping in the rain video in the cranberry wilderness so if you want more details on the setup of this hammock and see it up close and personal a little bit more uh, you can check that video out but it is pretty cool it lies flat i got the sleeping pad in here and uh I can sleep on my side, my stomach, 
any way I want, really, and um, I'm comfy. So I was pretty much side sleeping all night. <sighs> Just like this, really. Hmm. I feel like I could do that again, but I'm gonna get up and make some coffee. <laughs> Pull the bug net back, which is, speaking of the previous video, I didn't point it out, but somebody asked about the bug net hanging down in my face. Um, there's a little line here, it's, it's totally adjustable. So I can pull up on that little tab there, if you can kind of see that. I can pull on that and adjust it and it pulls the bug net further out of my face or further down, but it doesn't really bother me. All right, let's get the shoes and uh, hop on out of here. chilly out here, about 46 degrees actually according to my watch, <sighs> a little brisk, but it's all right, I got my puffy jacket, my outdoor vitals and vitro jacket, no, I should, should probably close the pit zip, so it's nice for ventilation, but uh, I don't need that now, I need all the warmth I can get at least until I get warmed up here, <sighs> all right. Speaking of warmed up, I think it's time to grab my food bag and get some coffee. Squirrel's mad at me. <laughs> or maybe he just wants my pop tarts. I'm not sure if I'm gonna eat a hot breakfast this morning or uh, just get on it. I might just get on it. And uh, I could always stop on the trail and cook a hot breakfast if I want. Um, I got one day where I can have a hot breakfast and then the other day I have pop tarts allotted, so. Either way, I think I'll just have some coffee for now and then uh, pack up the hammock and everything and uh, get back on that trail. But first things first, a little caffeine. Squeeze a little water out. There's actually a small little, I wouldn't even call it a stream, but over here is a uh, some flowing water, really just kind of a marshy area over there. I wouldn't, anybody coming out here, I would I would call this a dry site, but I kind of lucked out and had a little water flow out of there and just dipped into it. So I got enough for my coffee. I, I came in with enough for dinner last night. That's what I planned on, but this is a nice bonus. I don't have to walk anywhere to get extra water. I got plenty. And uh, I'm gonna try, if anybody remembers, I tried something called Jiva Cubes before they sent them to me. Uh, they just showed up in my P.O. box. Uh, now Jiva is the brand, Cube was the type. They were just little cubes. I think I showed it on my, I forget which video that was, a couple of them actually. But now they have a powder. So we're gonna try this once I get the water heated up. In my alcohol stove here. Put a little bit of fuel. Come on. There we go. All right. It should be heated up and soon on my little cat can alcohol stove. Put a little windscreen on there. And uh, get a little coffee going. All right, water's heated up. There we go. And this is just a classic one. I think I've tried the hazelnut before and mocha was pretty good. Give it a stir. Pine needles in there somehow. I've been doing some chores. I took down my uh, tarp already. You can see the hammock in the back there. Packed up most of my stuff out of the hammock because there's a lot of pockets in there. It's nice. <clears throat> but at this point, I just gotta pack away the 
uh, top quilt, my 40 degree top quilt, and like I said, it went down the mid 40s, so that was perfect last night. And the uh, sleeping pad in there is, is, I think, rated down to 20 degrees or something, something like that. So that was comfortable last night. But anyway, hopefully my coffee water didn't cool down too much while I was doing this chores. Still hot and tastes good. Now that I think about it, I'm supposed to put one packet for eight ounces of water and I probably have, uh, well, I'm not quite double that, but so it's not as strong tasting. I could probably actually throw a second one in there. Why not? All right, double strength, there we go. Oh yeah, that's more like it. That's got a little kick now, that's good. All right, well thanks Jiva for sending a uh, sample of the new coffee. That was quick and easy. <sighs> Finish packing up and get back out there. Well, first intersection of the day. We're about a mile, mile and a quarter in. We've been on the Raven Ridge Trail. The wind is still kicking, that is for sure. And from my weather radio, uh, they did say there could be some gusts today, up to 20-ish miles per hour. As well as tomorrow might have some hail, but we're not there yet. Well, we're gonna take the Rocky Ridge Trail right now to continue on our loop this way. By the way, I should probably mention now, for those of you, uh, let's call it more enthusiastic viewers of the channel, whether that's because you've been around for a long time or you've just gone through my back catalog as I navigate the mud here, which has been ongoing, um, you may have recognized that trailhead I started at, or this whole trail in general. Uh, that's because, yes, I have been here before. Believe it or not, it was almost six years ago five years and eight months to be exact, that I came here with my wife, uh, Mike and Danielle, AKA Daniel Disco and Trail Killer. And we did a very similar loop. And I'm, I'm pretty much so far retracing my muddy steps that we did on that trip. That trip was in fall. I think it was mid October or something like that. Really cool for the fall foliage and whatnot. I decided since it's June to come down and maybe get a different experience and see some blooms. Although it looks like I'm a little early, which is what I was kind of kind of anticipating. It's not fully in bloom. I think maybe more towards uh, late June or July it'd be really popping. But it is nice to see this in kind of a different environment, or I should say stage of year. But I am going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to kind of shorten the loop a little bit so that I can cut across uh, my intent. But as you can see right now, we're kind of back up. We gained a little more elevation, hence the wind. And we're back on this plateau here into these more rock kind of windswept formations. And I think pretty soon, I might find somewhere to have some breakfast because I haven't eaten yet. It's 9.34, I'm getting a little hungry. So as soon as I find somewhere that has a nice view, but not wind, which might be impossible, um, maybe I'll set up for some breakfast. Cool sandstone formations here. I'm actually off the trail just to check this out. It's right to the side. It's pretty neat. And uh, yeah, this is sandstone and the wind pretty much just over many, many years has created these smooth 
surfaces. Pretty neat. Someone had a little fire there. So, a few moments ago, or quarter, half mile ago, however you want to think about it, I pulled over in one of these formations like this, got all set up and excited to make a little scrambled egg, dehydrated, but scrambled egg breakfast meal. And uh, was just about to light my stove when I remembered that I did not refill water before leaving camp unfortunately. So <laughs> I'm going to have to find some water before I can eat. At this point it's um, it's 10 o'clock and uh, we're pretty high up on the plateau so I don't know what we're going to come across water wise. I mean it's not dire. If I was truly desperate there are a lot of marshy areas not right here but as I go uh, a lot of areas with standing water it would be some bad water <laughs> for sure. But if I was super desperate, I could probably force it through my filter, but I would probably uh, beat my filter up pretty good. So I'm just gonna keep moving through this uh, lovely landscape and hope for water and then breakfast, which may actually end up being brunch <laughs> or even lunch, depending how long it takes to uh, Find said water, but it's all good. The views are nice. The weather's perfect right now, at least. I mean, yeah, it's a little windy for sure, but the skies are pretty much clear. You got some some stratus clouds up there, but it's not overcast for sure. It's very beautiful. So keep making our way along here and see if you can't find some water. All right, finally having breakfast. It's like 10.30. No, probably later. It's uh, 11.09. So, kind of lunch, but we'll see how this is. Let it steep for a while. I got a breakfast skillet, hash browns, scrambled eggs, pork sausage patty, peppers, and onions. Um, I'll be honest, I usually don't like freeze-dried eggs. They can be a little spongy, but we'll see how this goes. I had this leftover and laying around and uh, I have actually even though I was I didn't have water to cook with I've been hiking with water but I usually put a little Mio squeeze you know those little squeezy flavor things with a little bit of uh, B vitamins and caffeine in them uh, but I learned my lesson today this was my 16 ounce bottle of water that I left camp with and I filled it up and flavored it cherry style with the Mio and uh, well I kind of wish I hadn't done that earlier on that rock formation because I could have cooked with this, but I didn't want cherry flavored eggs. So, right now though, I got some water. Some would call it a puddle, but there is a little pressure on uh, feeding it. So, I was able to use that. I filtered up some more for my reserves for hiking and uh, cooked a little meal with it. So, let's see how it goes. I kind of wish I had some hot sauce right now, but I don't. Mm. Well, okay. Probably because I haven't eaten since last night, but it tastes pretty good. A little uh, sausage flavor. Mm -hmm. I don't think I got any eggs yet. Oh, there's a chunk of egg. Let's see how it goes. Not bad. So, I don't know. Maybe I just made it incorrectly in the past, but this is pretty good. They have one that doesn't have potatoes. It's just eggs and bacon. I think that's the one I don't like as much because it's a little spongy, but with the potatoes in there, the uh, texture is pretty good. Mm. So, sent a little message to my wife on the spot over here. Still no cell service whatsoever. Actually, I think I got a hint of 1X. And I tried to send her a message, so we'll see if that goes through. But either way, the uh, spot will send her an email that tells me I'm okay in my location. So that's good. I'm sure that makes her feel better. 
and uh, yeah, just gonna enjoy my brunch and then uh, get back on the trail, I guess. About three miles in, leisurely pace, just enjoy myself. The views are pretty good, so I'm not complaining. Back into the wind. You can see over there. It's those rock formations we came down off of. Right under there. We dip down, hit the water, lunch break, came back up. And we're back into the wind. But at least we got a break during lunch. Breakfast or whatever that was. If so I can just figure out where the trail is. <laughs> or I should say which one of these is the trail. We'll keep on going. Looks like. This general direction so maybe it wraps around this way we'll figure it out there we go that looks a little better a little more like a trail so I started going dipping down over that ridge but from looking at my map on the GPS at least I need to be uh, staying up top so I kind of cut over to the left Back on the trail. I will point out, no blazes. And yes, I finally have sunglasses on. Sun's coming down pretty good. Uh, no blazes at all. I don't know if they blaze any of these trails around here. I'm not gonna go ahead and say they don't. So, either really know what you're doing, or I would highly suggest the GPS. Um, I have a paper map and a compass with me, I always do. But if it wasn't for the GPS, I would have wasted a lot of time uh, these last two days, particularly today, especially in that uh, windswept rock area over there. Uh, the trail was really faint in spots, and there was a lot of herd paths or animal paths that were just would go into dead ends and stuff. So GPS helped out a lot. I am recording right now on my GPS. Uh, anybody who wants to do the home game. I do have that available. I'll, I'll put a link in the video description uh, so you can do this as well. But occasionally at the intersections, major intersections, there are signs, signposts to tell you what's going on. But a lot of times it's pretty much just uh, up to you to figure it out. That's all right, we're on task right now. And apparently headed for more foggy traversal all right so almost to prove me wrong within minutes of me saying that this trail rocky ridge which is apparently 524 i can tell that from my map and it's also listed there has been consistently tagged with these uh upright trail markers so i stand corrected for this trail at least although i can assure you it was not like that uh, this morning and for most of yesterday. I want to say all of yesterday, but I could be wrong. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's sporadic, I guess, is the way to put it. Either way, you can notice that that only said the number 524, which I have on my map. The uh, map I have, I downloaded from National Forest Service and uh, printed out has all of the numbers on there and then I hand wrote in the names myself. This is actually my original map from five and a half, six years ago. And speaking of the trails that we're gonna do, so we started over here, Bear Rocks came down. So far it's all been all the same. Uh, we camped somewhere in here. Originally when we came, we camped here. I haven't hit that yet, that's big stone call. And on that original trip, we did Duncan Burger to Little Stone Call and Red Creek, this kind of section on the bottom here. But I'm gonna switch it up by cutting across here and Lion's Head is this guy right there. So it's gonna make the loop shorter, uh, but we'll get to see Lion's Head. And since I already did that before, 
Um, I'm just going to skip it this time. Plus, I actually came back a year after that trip in 2014 and did a winter trip where we pretty much just did a loop here on the southern end of this loop. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that because I've done it twice. And then tonight, probably camp somewhere around here by what's called the Forks, which is pretty popular. Some would say borderline overused the Forks area, the Fork of uh, Red Creek, I do believe is why it's called that. But it's middle of the week. Haven't really been seeing many people. I saw one person camping today when I was hiking out in that first mile or so. Didn't look like they had gotten up yet because around that time it was nine o'clock. So I guess they were sleeping in. Other than that, I've just seen two day hikers that were going the opposite direction, but it's been pretty sparse. So I'm thinking, even though that's a super popular area, I'm gonna go ahead and make that my target this evening. And um, I'll probably have it to myself. If not, it's a pretty big area. I think if anybody is around, probably just one or two groups at the most, but I'm thinking probably nobody. So we'll keep on keeping on. We are losing elevation now. We'll spend most of today going downhill. And then the last day, we'll be getting most of our elevation push back up to the parking area. <sighs> but for now, just keep on going downhill. Speaking of signage and intersections, got to give credit where credit's due. Certainly no lack of <laughs> information here. I actually remember this. Speaking of that winter trip I mentioned, I remember this signboard. Now, when we were here, that was the second trip I did to the Sods. Right now is my third. Uh, we went, I believe, yep, down that way on our winter trip. But right now, and there's a nice map too. We are here. We're gonna go down here on the big Stone Coal Trail. Uh, named so because it goes along Stone Coal, or I guess Big Stone Coal Creek. Uh, from looking at a map, I see a lot of tributaries and stuff labeled Stone Coal around here, but I think Big Stone Coal is where they all kind of run into. And sure enough, there it is. No bicycles. This is a wilderness area, so no mechanical devices allowed, which is why I don't have a drone or anything mechanical like that myself. And, uh, We'll head along. Now, yesterday was a possibility. If I had pushed further, this would have been my camp area, or I should say coming up. There's a bunch of campsites along this trail within the next, I wanna say mile to two miles, uh, a bunch of them. And like I mentioned earlier, that's where we camped the first time. But I'm thinking, unless my mood changes, but because of the rain and potential wind and hail tomorrow, I don't think I wanna have too many miles, so. I'm going to push past the lovely campsites that I see as I go down this trail and uh, go towards that forks area instead. And here's the mud again. Oh man, yeah, we are, uh, say goodbye to the wide trail. We are back into narrow trails, rhododendron, all kinds of foliage coming in on me. Oh man, this is gonna be fun. I have a feeling my feet are gonna get wet. I have low tops. These Gore-Tex are pretty good, but uh, <laughs> when you go past the ankle, well, you're getting wet no matter what. Luckily, these do dry out pretty quick. I actually went over my ankle on both of these in some mud earlier, and you can see they're starting to dry out. So they do dry out faster than my high top Merrells that I was using prior. Well, let's see if we can stay dry if possible and uh, navigate this <laughs> runoff, basically. But I guess it's the trail. Well, apparently I overshot my turnoff by an eighth of a mile. Luckily, I caught that on the GPS, but um, just happened to feel like it was time to check it 
I haven't seen any intersections around here. Actually, the only reason I was looking is because I have marked on my GPS the first campsite that we used for night one of our two night trip back in uh, 2013 with Mike and Danielle and my wife. It's apparently somewhere back here, within a tenth of a mile or so now. Um, so, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe there's a sign I missed or something, but I'm gonna backtrack a little bit and split off. This is a trail, but it is not the trail I want. It would not take me where I need to go. So we'll head back this way, and then I guess as a bonus, I'll take a look at that campsite and see if it brings back any memories. And actually, you know what's interesting? I do remember stepping over this pile of sticks here. That is a well-worn path. Usually when you see a pile of sticks like that, it's somebody telling you that it's a game trail or a water runoff or something like that. And it's letting you know, hey, the trail's not going here anymore. That looks really well-worn and it definitely kept going. And on my GPS, it is, it doesn't have a name, but it's, uh, it's definitely a trail. But somebody was doing the right thing and trying to tell me or other people not to go up there. Or maybe that's a coincidence, but look at that. I don't even know how I did this. I came from down there. I guess maybe I was focused on avoiding the mud and somehow I went straight. But we actually should have bared to the left. That was tricky. I'll tell you what, and no signs. Definitely no signs. So if I didn't have a GPS, I think I would have made... At least three costly mistakes at this point. Um, would I have gotten through it? Yeah, I would have figured it out, I'm sure. Well, I'm not sure, but I hope. But uh, yeah, it's definitely eye opening. But this is well worn and looks like we have a little water across here, but I think we'll make it. And then I do kind of recognize this. I think this is our first night's camp from that um, first trip we did. Let's check it out. Um, after I get across the water, of course. Oh yeah, I remember this crossing. I remember actually coming here and dipping in with my Sawyer Squeeze and grabbing water from down here for the four of us. I remember these roots and everything, that's crazy. Let's see, yeah, I kind of remember this field up here too. It's probably only a hundred yards or so up. Uh, it's probably this path right here. Let's take a look. Yep. GPS says I'm right on top of it. Oh, this is it. I remember this. There it is. <laughs> the rock chairs aren't quite what they used to be. But there you go. Fire pit. And we put our tent right back over here. So this is a good spot. I think we put it right in here, actually. It's maybe more erosion. Those roots don't look too inviting, but, yep. This is probably a bathroom area over here. I won't go down there, but there's our first campsite right here. Not bad. But like I said, I'm gonna keep moving. Well, eight miles in now. Got an intersection. Duckenberger, we're not gonna take that. We're gonna stay on Big Stone Coal, 513. Came from down there, headed over here. Right now, it's only 2.30. Um, because I got, for me at least, a pretty early start. A lot of times, I'll wake up at eight and get on the trail by like 10. And today, I woke up at 6.30 and was on the trail by 8.30, nine o'clock, something like that. So, I'm gonna head to the game. So we're moving along the Rocky Point Trail. Lion's Head should be maybe under 100 meters. Although Lion's Head or not, right around the corner, it's opening up pretty nice. 
not a bad view. So I think maybe around this corner, I mean, basically it's up there somewhere. It's just how we get to it, but we'll see. All right, this looks a little more familiar and I see some open sky above. So this is probably what we took on that winter trip. I didn't bring that GPS data with me. Brought my first trip, but not that. But I do have some tags that show me to branch off here. And uh, I guess if we scramble up here, maybe we'll get a view. We'll see. At this point, uh, my main priority is um, water and food. But we'll see if we can get a view here. And then we'll continue on. <sighs> All right, I see a cairn up there, a little pile of rocks. And uh, speaking of rocks, it's quite a large rock to be this unstable, but that's all right. I shed my pack. I left it uh, right down over there. I'll be heading back to it, so no reason to bring that along. Let's see the best way to get up here. Ah. Much lighter and faster without the pack on, but don't want to get complacent and overly confident. Well, I feel like I may have taken the wrong approach, but pretty sure that's it right there. Maybe not the best angle, but I don't think I want to go up and down this again. But it was a pretty fun little hike. Actually, more impressive is the view behind me. But there's part of Lion's Head, at least. Now I just got to scale back down. Hopefully find my pack. I did bring my front pack with me, so I have my GPS. I mean, I don't think it's an issue, but if I really panicked, I could uh, follow my breadcrumbs and get right back where I came from. But yeah, right now, though, I'm hungry and thirsty. So I'll... Uh, stare at this in the clouds a little longer and then I'm thinking a mile or so to go and we'll get camp and some dinner well 12 and a half miles later and here we are Hanging out by the river here. I got the uh, Amok Dramar in recliner mode or lounge mode, if you will. Pretty much like a chair. Just kind of enjoying myself, looking at the water. Probably make some dinner soon. My dinner tonight is breakfast as well. It's the Southwest breakfast hash, I believe, with some green chilies. I'll have that in a little bit. It's uh, going on 6:30 eh, ish. And uh, yeah, at this point, I got two hours left the daylight which is perfect and not much to do but just kind of hang out and relax as of right now it's still clear but i'm thinking tonight we might get some rain at least like early morning so i'll put the tarp up at some point maybe gather some firewood see if i can't get a little fire going like i did last night and just kind of soak it all in not bad not a bad day at all Oh yeah, that feels pretty good right there. Good morning, everyone. A little before 7 o'clock. Started raining around 4.30. I just got up to uh, answer nature's call. And I just happened to be out there. It finally started raining. And uh, now it stopped. Looks like my tarp, I could have set it up a little better. It's a little, a little loose right now, actually. But despite my uh, lackluster tension and setup, uh, it's still kept me dry for the last few hours so that's good at this point I think um, yep I will get up and um, 
hopefully it doesn't open up again. I, I, based on the forecast, it will at some point, but hopefully I'll have a chance to set, um, or pack up rather, without getting rained on. But the nice thing about a setup like this is I can leave the tarp up until the very end. So I can just stay under here, pack up, take the tarp down and roll. I'll probably skip the coffee this morning just to speed things up. And I'm really looking forward to a cheeseburger. So that is definitely in my future this evening as a little reward for wrapping this hike up. But we still got, I guess, uh, seven-ish miles, something like that, to knock out before uh, before we can get that first hike cheeseburger. But for now, let's pack up and see what happens with this weather. All right, reluctantly I am up. And there's the outside view of the tarp. The campsite, of course, the water over there we've had next to us. Put me right to sleep last night. A little fire pit over here. I had a small fire last night. Everything was pretty damp and I didn't really put too much effort into it, but for like an hour or so, I had a, some twigs and stuff going. Some rock chairs over there. They really do like their rock chairs here in Dolly Sods. And, um, yeah, that's that's about it. The trail we came from and that we're going to return to is right down this way. And up here, there's some more campsites and there's even some plenty of other spots to camp on the way um, to here for the about 100, 200 yards or so. So definitely a nice little spot for sure. And from what I've read, there's just campsites all over around these areas, uh, the forks that is. So this is probably just a small little portion of it. So pack it up, get on the trail. All right, campsite is clear. It is 8.17 and the rain is back. So yeah, it's coming down eh, pretty decent. It's three trips in a row for me for the last day is <laughs> Tons of rain. Well, I don't know yet, but I'm just assuming. But uh, <laughs> I'll probably go for a hat trick based on the forecast. But I got my rain gear on over top of my front pack as usual, or at least I figured that out three trips ago and uh, started this whole rain uh, run that I've been on. I don't know why it took me so long to figure out uh, after years of hiking to just put my rain jacket over top of my front pack. Um, and then I don't have to worry about that because it is a ribs front pack. People did ask a lot on the last video what kind of pack it is. It's ribs is the brand, R-I-B-Z, but um, I can't find it. I got it on Amazon. I don't see it anymore. So I don't know if they stopped making it or what. But anyway, it's not waterproof, but it is very nice and convenient for all my camera gear and stuff is what I keep in there, which is not included in my base weight, 13 pounds. <sighs> Where'd I come from here? I saw smoke coming from over here last night. So he must have packed up early to beat the rain as well. You can see all the campsites all over around here, like I was saying. All right. Back into the woods, back into the rain. Pretty rocky. And right into the elevation gain to start the day here. As expected, this is the bulk of the elevation gain as far as the trip goes. That'll be today. But I'll put all that data in my blog post and video description and whatnot but still it shouldn't be too bad which is why I brought the nicer uh, larger heavier but super comfortable Amok Jamar hammock that's been really nice to hang out in and sleep in last night was pretty nice just uh, putting it in recliner mode aimed right at the river Ate my dinner there, relaxed a little bit. It's pretty fun. Whoa! Almost slipped. Should 
Probably pay attention to what I'm doing. Let's see what's going on in here. It's getting a little tight. Oh, I'm overheating in this rain jacket too. That's the downside. Sometimes I go back and forth on that. So if I end up sweating, then I'm just covering sweat instead of rain. But I don't know. Three trips ago, my first of the rain hat trick, I um, only had a jacket, didn't bother with pants, which I usually don't, but I got so soaked on that trip that I've been going back to bringing the pants as well if it rains. And it really is kind of nice just to not be completely soaked. I do, I have the convertible camp pants you've seen me wearing, but the uh, legs zip off and they turn into the shorts. I do that because I found that I'll put my rain pants over top of my long hiking pants and they touch, they touch the shoes, the hiking pants do, and they wick up all the water. And after a couple hours of hiking, they've soaked all the way up and you got wet pants anyway. Plus it keeps me a little cooler. But mostly I do it just to keep that water from wicking up the pant legs. Pretty cool up here though, it's starting to open up a little bit. And these open, kind of grassy areas that we've been coming across here and there in Dolly Sods, that's where the Sods Park comes from. It's kind of a local um, term or slang or whatever for a large open area, almost like a grazing area for cattle, which I think um, it has been used for as well because the first part of Dolly Sods, the Dolly part is kind of a, a nickname-ish uh, iteration of the name Dahl, D-A-H-L. I believe it was a German family that came here in eh, 1700s, late 1700s, I think. And uh, I'm pretty sure they owned uh, a lot of this land originally, or at least back then, and had some farms and stuff up here. And so over the years, it's become known as Dolly Sods. <sighs> but, we're not in the sods anymore. <laughs> we are back in the woods and the mud. Got our first intersection of the day here. This should be Blackbird Knob that we're intersecting. Let's see. Yep, Blackbird Knob. We, we're coming off a of Red Creek Trail. And that's where we camped last night. So, I'm gonna head, from my perspective, right. And this should take me towards Dobin Grade, which I'm not really gonna take. I'm only gonna take it for like a tenth of a mile. Um, and then Raven Ridge. And then ultimately back to the parking lot. So, I'm thinking today looks more like maybe five or six miles. Um, just keep forgetting that I ended up racking out a pretty decent amount of mileage uh, yesterday. And yes, it's still raining and it's still muddy, but it's fun. Hey buddy, you startled me. <laughs> Almost walked right on top of you. You are pretty big. I'm gonna leave you alone. But you're cool, man. And you refuse to move. But, I mean, for perspective, I don't wanna scare you, but here's my foot. You can see I finally took the rain pants off, getting a little sun on these stellar legs of mine but wow you are a big turtle look at that tail back there too all right well you have a good day bud enjoy the uh well hopefully breaking the rain right all right see you later <laughs> certainly have had quite a lot of wildlife on this trip. I mean, I think this is the most deer I've seen 
on any hiking trip ever. It's got to be in the dozens. I mean, that first night I was hanging out in that field, basically with them. Um, they were at camp throughout the night. They were camp in the morning. Um, multiple crossings on the trails. Actually, I, I'm getting so used to it, I didn't even think about it, but like 10 minutes ago, uh, maybe 15, one ran right across the trail in front of me. And uh, now a big old turtle. Haven't seen any bears, although they're definitely in this area. But no bears yet, and at this point, probably not. But we got ourselves a little water crossing here. That's not too bad. Had a little snack, I did get hungry. I'm trying to hold out for that burger. I usually like to um, keep the calories low on the last day, just so I can really guilt-free go to town on a burger. But at this point, I'm out of fuel. I used what was left last night. I made the decision to uh, use my denatured alcohol fuel and um, get a fire kicked off because it died down a couple times because the wood was wet. So I can't cook noodles, <laughs> but I don't know if I'm the only one who doesn't mind this, but I bust up the uh, ramen noodles in a bag. This is the uh, remnants of it. I like the chunkier pieces more, but I can eat this out of here. Uh, I just mix it with the, <laughs> with the seasoning mix and uh, eat it like chips. So I've told that to people before and they think I'm kind of gross, but I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks that's tasty. Maybe you just have to be hungry enough. All right, so Dobin grade goes both ways here. We're only gonna take it for a 10th of a mile and then we're gonna hop on Raven. So, head over here. This place is muddy. I know I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. Uh, and there's been some, this is nothing compared to some of the stuff I went through, but just wasn't filming it at the time because I was trying not to uh, get bogged down, pun intended. But yeah, prepare to have wet feet if you come here. Uh, when we came in the fall, it wasn't quite as bad, but uh, it's up there in terms of wet trails but anyway tenth of a mile another intersection and the final push beautiful area right here too there it is the intersection we're looking for Raven Ridge up there Durban grade continues down here now if there's one piece of advice for anybody out there who's planning on doing this hike yourself first off highly recommend it good idea it's beautiful even in these overcast conditions it's just it's just an awesome area i really like it i'm really glad i came back however if you get to this point you'll look on a map and you will quickly realize that the dobin grade goes at least compared to the Raven Ridge, which is the gray line right there, you can see on my old notes, we did exactly that. We took the Dobin Gray because it seems like it goes right to the parking lot. And it does. It's shorter. I don't know why we did that because a couple quick Google searches and you'll get to the same conclusion. In fact, I don't know why we went down there when we came because I know for a fact that I read up on it and everybody said Dobin grade avoid it it is a muddy sloppy mess it, it's it's like the mud version of quicksand and uh, I don't know if I misunderstood and thought that it was a different section they were talking about but either way when we were back here back in 2013 we went down here and within not too long it got really hairy and at a certain point my wife actually fell into basically well, she was up to her ankles and then it quickly started going up further and further until she was pretty much up to her waist. And uh, I had to run in and get her and pull her back out. So I would say, please don't bother with the Dobin grade. Um, I would say any time of year, but definitely not now because look, that's a good trail right now. And it looks like that. So anyway, long story short, we're gonna hit the Raven Ridge up and uh, this will be also, from what I've read, not just less prone to quicksand, 
but uh, it's more visually appealing too. So with all of those factors considered, it's an easy choice for me. We'll head this way. And then uh, next intersection is actually going to be back to where we began this hike. What was I saying again about the uh, Raven Ridge Trail being less sloppy? Yeah. <laughs> I went uh, almost up to my knee. I had to move fast. So, um, yeah, I'm not saying it's the perfect trail. Matter of fact, I don't even see any trail right now. But, you know, <laughs> it's better than going up to your waist, I guess. I certainly wanted, wouldn't want to do that by myself either. But, um, yeah, I'm muddy. Thankfully, on this trip, compared to my last trip, I have a nice, dry, fresh pair of socks and shoes waiting for me in the Jeep. <sighs> Definitely going to be putting them to use. Well, I see a Jeep on that hill. It's a good sign. Just a little more mud to navigate. Well, there it is. The Jeep's still there. The wind's still here. And I'm back. We did it. Look at the skies. Man, I haven't even looked behind me in a while. Those are some dark skies. They are rapidly moving away, you can see. But, didn't really get rained on much today at all. I mean, we had the morning stint and everything, but other than that, least rain I've had in three trips. So I'll take it. Don't mind the wind either. And there you have it. Dolly Sods, I love it. I'm so glad that I came back. It is a great spot. I highly recommend it. But right now, I'm pretty hungry. So I'm gonna get this pack off. I'm gonna get some dry shoes on. And uh, then I'm gonna get on the road. So, till next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now, it's cheeseburger time. <laughs>